live on Facebook. Awesome. And we are live on Facebook. Hello, everyone. Ooh. Okay. Okay, I just let you in into, into the live. Wonderful. <laughs> and hello, hello. Hello, hello. Hello, my dear. How are, How you? are you? I'm um, good, good, good. Happy Friday morning. Happy Friday morning. This is a different time for us, right? It is, it is. It's kind of cool. I'm excited. I'm very Hello, excited. everybody who's joining us here at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> it's a different look for all of us today. I know. It is, right? <laughs> <laughs> Even the team members here at Windowworks are like, <laughs> like, what are you doing here? <laughs> wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's not time yet uh, all right so um hold on a second it's not showing up on wtf account that vitalia inc went live so right. we need to wait just a second no worries yeah i may need your help can you do that all right we're gonna um asking my my ever so helpful and technically advanced husband to to do this for me so he's there in the background right behind mm -hmm. this computer so that <laughs> you and i can be live here at least on facebook right yeah. no it is um i like to call it he is the window treatment friday live tech support he totally is. <laughs> he's he's a tech support for Vitalia Inc. for Window Treatment Life for for the the, the whole household around here. <laughs> and usually, what it means is is like when I'm like, ah, oh, this is not working, honey, come over here. He he comes over. He like looks at the computer. He like he takes a breath, and and then it just magically and miraculously works. All right, and he got it to work. So I see that Window Treatment Friday began watching this live video. Oh, awesome! Thank you, honey. <laughs> okay, now I can let window treatment Friday in perfect and there okay. you are thank you honey yay there I am Hi. there I am on Instagram too hello hello everybody let me just adjust the screen it seems to be the best that it's going to do today perfect <laughs> it's perfect anyway right good good is good enough for us today hey, and hey. actually every day yes so, hey, hey, everybody, good morning. This is a new yes. time for us. We're trying okay. something new. Uh, welcome to Window Treatment Friday Live. <laughs> um, Kim, and it's wonderful to see you as always. Good to see you too, Vita. <laughs> and so you guys thank you for humoring us we're trying like i said something new it's nine instead of 12 mostly for a very special reason yes. for me personally so my son anton who just turned 12 mm -hmm. he made it he we're a family of swimmers and by we i don't mean me <laughs> i mean <laughs> my son my daughter my husband um my, my mother-in-law so it's like it runs in their family mm -hmm. so he's been swimming since he was was four or five and last year and this year specifically he got into junior olympics yay, yay. i know hello hey 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 my son you know very excited so um the the race if there's three days of of races or swims meets I should yeah. call them. <laughs> um, and that's today and we have to be there by like 10 30 so Kim was gracious enough to change the time to nine o'clock and we also thought hey let's maybe try something new and we'll see how it sticks yes. so thank you for humoring us you guys yes yes and today's episode is episode number 60 and we are going to be discussing a topic that I can't believe it took us 60 episodes to get here, but bay windows. <laughs> Sometimes that's what it takes, right? <laughs> All right, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so this is a project that we did here at Windowworks for a retail client of ours. And um, this was for her living room where she was trying to maximize as much of her seating area as possible. So mm -hmm. she wanted to have that little armless set tee in the window area there, but then she also wanted to frame it with window treatments and she also wanted privacy. So there was a couple of things that we kind of, um, a couple of boxes that we had to check off. Mm -hmm. So um, we opted to put wood blinds in the bay and um, a pair of stationary panels on the outside. As you can see, this is kind of a closed bay. So a lot of times if it's an open bay, maybe we'll put panels on the ends 
and in the middle, but because this was closed and we wanted to, you know, as Vita and I always like to bring the ceiling height up higher, we opted to put the panels on the outside. And it just kind of, to me, it kind of framed that seating area, kind of made it a little bit unique and a little special. In it that. looks very cozy. Yes, yes. And uh, she also wanted, the reason for the wood blinds was light control. So that was one of the things that we always ask when we're talking about when clients want to put shades on windows. How do we want to diffuse the light? Do you like to have light control? You like to tilt it close, tilt it open, or is it like a Roman shade or a woven wood, a duet, a honeycomb shade where it's an all up and all down situation? And she mm -hmm. definitely wanted to have the ability to have light control and visibility control. So she opted for two inch wood blind. Very nice. And especially I'm looking at that blanket on the on that yes. side too, and I just am envisioning your client just cuddling up in there, curling mm -hmm. up with her with a book, um, and covering herself in that cozy blanket and mm -hmm. just having um a wonderful time yes. on a Friday night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So this next project was done by us here at at Vitalia Inc. This was a client in Doylestown, which mm -hmm. is in Bucks County. That's north of Philadelphia for our viewers here local. And this was a, a high bay. So if in the previous example, Kim had, um, I guess, like the soffit yeah. or like it was closed up at the top. This is a high bay, it's totally opened. And um, she, this client also has a piece of furniture mm -hmm. inside her bay. So not quite a settee or a cozy space, but she did want to also optimize her <laughs> space and she moved that furniture in. And we framed the whole window with window treatments. So we did the um, a straight, valance with inverted pleats up above the window to frame it at the top, kind of add that um, eyelash, if you will, mm -hmm. that little bit of mascara on the face. <laughs> and uh, and then we framed the sides with stationary panels. So this was, you can tell by the furniture, this is a very traditional client. You can also tell by the choice of the fabric that the designer picked, as well as the choice of the window treatments. Now to for context, before the straight valance, she had Kim Wild Guess, what do you think she Swags had? Swags and jabos. Swags and jabos all over the place, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe a rosette. <laughs> I bet you there were a couple, yes. <laughs> I wish I had them before. <laughs> but that's exactly what she had there prior to us kind of um, not quite transforming it, but more like bringing it more into the 21st century where um, swags are not quite in style yet again. <laughs> <laughs> um. So this, so this is like, you call, you call this and we call it like a tailored kick pleat balance because there are the pleats. Everyone kind of calls it a different thing, but let's talk to everyone kind of about like about pleat placement, because I know a lot of times that is a factor on like, where are we going to put the pleats? How many pleats on a balance this big, mm -hmm. especially mm -hmm. if they, um, they opted for a, a, a fabric that has a lot of pattern going on. So that's another thing to consider when you're doing this kind of balance you know, pattern selections and things of our, our style, balance style selections rather. Exactly, yes, Th thank you for that question. That's really mm -hmm. um, quite great, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to breeze right over it, but thanks for pulling me back. The um, So th this bay is not huge. So you can yeah. see that each window is a single window. So it's not a huge bay. So when you have a single window like that, we usually here don't, put the center pleat. We only have the pleats right. on the sides, which on is which yeah. would be referred to as kick pleats, which is what we call them mm -hmm. as well on the sides. But being that it's a bay and um, we didn't want to have just a straight expanse of the fabric, um, we did put inverted pleats, which are the same as kick, as, except that we refer to the, we use the word kick on the ends mm -hmm. and inverted pleat when it's inside the valance, mm -hmm. which is what this is would be in the corners. So the pleats are positioned exactly in the corner and they are aligned with those mullions. So nothing is by chance. Yeah. <laughs> it's not accidental. And we specifically measured this valance. So the pleats inside the valance would be aligned with those mullions. Now, one may ask, well, how is that board connected and how do you transport it? It's actually easier than one may think. Mm -hmm. So these are actually three separate boards. Yes, mm -hmm. the valance is sewn as one cohesive straight valance. And when it's laid on the table, it's 
it can be completely flat and it's a singular valance. Mm -hmm. Yet when it's mounted on the board, because the boards are separated, the only thing that connects them is the fabric that's in the front of the board. And that allows us for positioning of the boards, whichever way the, the angle goes, because angles are never exact, you know, mm -hmm. no matter how, uh, first of all, these two, even though they look like they're the same angle, yeah. they never are. <laughs> right, there's always a little bit of a differentiation there. Um, and also, no matter how accurately you, you measure it, there is still variations between the bottom and the top and somewhere in between. So by having two separate boards, it allows us the flexibility to position them whichever way the wall essentially goes. Mm -hmm. But having the connected fabric makes it looking as if it were one cohesive balance. Right, right. So a little um, trick of the trade there. Yes, yes. And I know a lot of times when we've done um, inverted uh, pleated valances that sometimes we've had to line them up. Um, last week we showed you, I showed you a project that we did for Suzanne Lariau in Long Island and it was a bay, but it was a shirred valance. Well, for this project that we're finishing now, we did a, a very similar installation and it was, I think we had... 11 pleats mm, on it oh, wow. mm -hmm. so because we had to line it up with certain um, architectural, elements architectural elements in the window elements. and then because it was rounded you needed those pleats to kind of and the expanse that it was we needed the pleats so that it, it could follow it cleanly exactly yep yeah. 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 So there's a lot of thinking that goes into yeah. this. Nothing is by chance, you guys. Nothing no. is by, by accident. <laughs> yeah. And certainly not shutters. <laughs> no. So this is a project that we did for um, a retail client of ours here in Short Hills. Are the pleats tacked or left loose in line to line up with the actual window? How did you do it? <laughs> The pleats are tacked, if I'm understanding the question. Yeah, mm -hmm. the valance is completely sewn. The valance is complete, and it's also, it's not a, um, it's not loosely attached to the board. It's not like on Velcro or anything. I know some workrooms would mm -hmm. put it on the Velcro, again, to create that flexibility. We actually mount it, we staple, staple onto it on the board. Yeah, we staple it on the board. Mm -hmm. The pleats Start are away. sewn, There's the, everything is seamed, everything is finished. Oh, good morning, Window Fashion Vision Magazine. And also good morning to Gina, because she said oh, hi, yes, ladies, before. before. <laughs> and good morning to Mary Beth. I saw yes. you there as well. So, hey, maybe morning hour will be the time that we'll be popping in here instead <gasps> of 12 noon. <laughs> we can have all of, all of us can enjoy our coffee together. Oh, mm. Yes. Yes. I don't have Cheers, mine. You guys, I have one right here. <laughs> I was stuck in traffic on the way into the office. Um, <laughs> no, and especially like going back to the... Um, to the valance real quick. I know for Billy, he prefers that the valances aren't mounted on the boards. Mm. Um, so does he mount it himself? He does. He mounts it himself on, on the install. He, he, so he brings a, a staple gun and mm -hmm. he staples it onto the board. Mm -hmm. So he mounts the boards first and then he staples them. Yeah. So interestingly, so in that situation, let me just go back. Let me see. So do you see how we, we are flush against the ceiling? Mm -hmm. So the valance is actually mounted to the board on the top. I don't, I honestly, <laughs> he is the master, the artiste. And I just say, I let the workroom know, no, please don't mount it on the boards. And he just likes to make sure that the angles are correctly because yeah. it's, yeah, and it, yeah, bay we, windows are very tricky. Yeah. So I can see how a, an installer would have certain preference of how he wants it done in order to secure a successful installation. At the yeah. end of the day, that's really what it what it, it is about. Yeah, because especially if the boards aren't right, and he has some whatever. But okay, anyway, moving on. Hello, Wandra. <laughs> <laughs> so this next uh, project was one of ours, like I said, for a client here in Short Hills, and this was her master bedroom, and she had like a very this is a very slight bay. It's not a huge bay. And she didn't want to do a lot of window treatments, as you can see from the dog cage in front of the window. The dog would sleep in her bedroom. So, um, and they left the cage open so the dog had, you know, uh, ability to roam. So she didn't want to have any type of window treatments upstairs. Mm -hmm. um, so she opted for shutters. And um, I really love the way that this project came out. Now, you can see here that the tops of the windows, those louvers are closed. Be I was wondering what that's about. Yeah. Well, us. because of this, the height of the window, this particular size height requires two divider rails because of weight. Yep. So 
everybody just called, so I went on pause, but now uh, I'm back. Okay, so, okay, just if you didn't hear me, they uh, we, we had to put two divider rails in there. And luckily, this client had a transom window where we could line it up at the top. And then we lined up the other lock rail divider rail um, at the... Uh, at the center. center at the center of the window below at the double hung below so um yeah so for that she wanted to keep those closed all the time for um for at night because it's very hard to reach um mm -hmm. and these are with the rear tilt or louver mover depending on the brand that you work with mm -hmm. and um what i liked about this is that this because the center window is a little larger that's mm -hmm. always one of those things is like proportion. How is that going to look when you have to put two doors there and only have single yeah. doors at the end? So right. those are the kinds of things. And this is not an inexpensive product that you're just going to be like, oh, yeah, we're just going to take a chance on it, you know, fingers yeah. crossed and hopes that it works out. Mm -hmm. But I think it worked out pretty It worked out pretty well that the proportions are very close. And, um, yeah, so it was an outside mount with a frame. So let me just make sure yeah. I understand the center, the two center panes, they are narrower than the left and the right one. Very slightly. Slightly. But yeah. you know, interestingly, like now that you mention it, I can see it because right. I'm looking for it. But I looked at this picture before we started. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh yeah, this looks really great. I thought there were four windows actually. I no, didn't realize. No, no. Yeah, because if um so the left window, it's uh it opens left. The right mm -hmm. window opens right, and then the centers open in the middle. So and these are also things that you have to talk about when you're putting shutters on a bay window. Like, how often are you going to be opening your window or wanting your shutters open? Because, yes, the doors on the ends, they're going to hinge open to the outsides, but the center doors are going to hinge now into the, you know, outer doors. So mm -hmm. that's always a conversation that when you want to put shutters anywhere that you have to, you know, you have to see. Is it the kind of thing that are you an open window type of household that you like to have your windows open and have a full view and maybe, you know, shutters might not necessarily be the product for you if that's the case because, you know, you're just kind of doors opened everywhere and especially in a situation like this, it's four doors, it's a lot. Mm -hmm. Lots of decisions go into <laughs> into window treatments and yeah. with sh shutters, certainly, it well, any window treatment not really being an inexpensive investment, but yeah. shutters for sure being one of the most. One of the top. Yeah. Top, exactly. Top, higher tier in terms of investment. Um, and uh, we've we've had shutter episodes before, and we've always said that people have the love hate relationship with shutters. They do. <laughs> some love them, some hate them. Uh, but it certainly has its place, and it certainly has a certain look. And um, knowing how to measure for them, how to sell them, how to talk about them, that is certainly a skill. Yeah, and we are very fortunate that we have Billy, who has been doing this for 36 years, that he knows how to make it happen. <laughs> right, but also let's give kudos to you, Kim. You know what? If you <laughs> sold this product, <laughs> this was a, this was actually well an, well. an old project of uh, mine and Luann's. We this is when I first came back, and we kind of tag teamed on this project together. So for me, it was kind of watching her do her thing and, and learning. So it was you know I didn't know about the needing the double you know, lock rail there because of the yeah. height. Yeah. So kudos to Luann as yes. always, not that she needs any, but <laughs> <laughs> okay. So we talked about, uh, some smaller bays here. We have a really large bay. I mean, th this bay pretty much extends to the width of the whole room. Right. And we have, uh, hot, um, wider windows, each each one of those three windows is on the wider side, not quite the double window, but definitely more than just your regular 30 to 36 inch window. It's also a high bay, meaning there is no like low ceiling or soffit at the top. We have crown molding going. These are pretty high ceilings. So this is also a, in a bedroom. So these needed to be functional. The mm. treatments themselves. So what the client opted out, for, opted for rather is uh, functional draperies on decorative hardware with rings. So, and you being such expert on hardware, Kim, I think you would appreciate how we needed to do those um, movable sockets the to, elbows, to yep. connect the rods, the elbows, exactly, mm -hmm. so that so we can get the corners quite right. And uh, then we have two little finials on the end. 
we talked extensively about uh, how many widths of material there needs to be on each window and um, because usually with these situations the center panels tend mm -hmm. to be wider because yeah. they need to cover half of one window and half of the other window whereas the outer panels really only need to cover half of each window but you can see here that we opted for um, equal width so mm -hmm. to make to the customer was very um proportion centric and uh, if anything was slightly off she would be able to see it so uh, we didn't want to do just one or one and a half width on the sides and two widths in the center so we opted for two widths on each side uh, on each panel rather yeah it's crazy that pleat count can be very important Mm. You, you wouldn't think so, but you know. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. But you know, interesting, so far we've had, we had a shutter, uh, we had uh, panels on the sides, we had panels on the sides and a valance, and here you guys can see yet another example of how a bay window can be treated. And so very similar windows, but different types of treatment depending mm -hmm. on those little uh, differentiations and um, nuances of each bay window. Perfect. All right, and what I have here in this uh, bay window are motorized Roman shades. It's a little hard to tell, but there is a bathtub in front of this bay window. So this is oh, for yeah, someone. Oh yeah, see a little bit oh, yeah. of a faucet. Yeah. So, um, oh hi from Morocco. Hello. Oh my goodness. Good morning, or well, good, good afternoon, morning. <laughs> or good afternoon, or good evening. Over there. Yeah. Are you joining us for coffee? <laughs> yeah. Or they might be joining us for a cocktail over there. Um. So with this, it, it is in a master uh, uh, bathroom or a primary bathroom, excuse me. And uh, we did this project for Jody McWright Interiors. And uh, because there was a larger tub in front of the windows, we opted to do motorized um, Roman shades. Mm -hmm. So that this way the client could just hit a button and the Romans go up. And then when she wants her privacy, they can go down. So when doing this on a bay, especially trying to get the proportions right, and um, it's, it's a little hard to tell in the photograph, but they the Romans are um, almost always are almost touching at the top. Oh, so, sure. Yeah. I can tell. Yeah. Uh -huh. So and obviously we have to give a little bit of space so that this way the Romans could function um, and go up and down. But yeah, so the, what's so funny, like to your point before Vita, was that you're um, with this episode, we're really showing everyone different ways how to treat almost the same exact window or situation of a window. Um, so this bay is really weird. We have one window on the side, we have a wider window, and then we have two little windows. I have never seen a bay like that. <laughs> Welcome to construction in New Jersey. <laughs> yeah. Now, this is for a townhome. So, um, and what you don't know is in the mass, in the primary bedroom, there's another set of windows that's like this. And I've showed oh where we've done stationary panels on them. It's It it kind of conceals it once you put panels on there. But with right. the Roman shades, it really highlights that the, the windows, yeah. all four windows are a different size. Incredible. Just yeah. crazy. I yeah. wonder if they have those types of windows in Morocco. Will you yeah. tell us? Because <laughs> clearly we have, apparently we have them in New Jersey. <laughs> I've never seen those in Pennsylvania. So yeah. you guys, yeah. you guys are really special. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It was builder's choice. <laughs> Sometimes you wonder. You did a great job. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And uh, so in another, yet another variation on a bay window. So here we don't have a soffit. We go directly into the ceiling. However, we have a bench at the bottom. So mm -hmm. this bay window doesn't go all the way. <laughs> yes, they sure they do mm -hmm. have those windows in Morocco. <laughs> <laughs> um, so this bay does not go all the way down to the floor. It kind of stops at um like 20, what, what is the usual height? Like 26, 30 inches yeah. or so, right? And this was actually on the higher side too. And that's why we didn't do a cushion. I, I remember now because this bench was kind of on the higher side and uh, the owner had to like almost hop onto it to yeah, even sit cool. on it. So yeah. there's no need for a cushion <laughs> here. But we did want to treat the window. We did want to just kind of leave it hanging there and, you know, 
naked. This was part of a master bedroom. And on the side, we had beautiful draperies and gorgeous headboard and a bed skirt. And there was some upholstery done. So this was part of a sitting room right next to the master bedroom. So we didn't want this window to go naked. <laughs> so we opted for a, a simple valance. This is actually a similar valance to what I showed in one of my previous pictures in the very first one, mm -hmm. where I had those two panels on the sides. And um, here again, came to your earlier question and point these pleats are aligned with mullions but the difference between this balance and my first one is that the center window is wider mm -hmm. and therefore we added the center pleat there and of course also this center pleat is aligned with the center mullion so hopefully you guys can see that on Facebook and Instagram how mm -hmm. um, these little pleats they're kind of like tucked in nicely but they add um a sweet touch to to otherwise what, what would otherwise be a very boring straight balance so just so everyone in you know non-window treatment jargon could understand you have essentially here five pleats and four sections essentially so basically a section of valance over each window is that what we have going on here so there is a actually I would say uh, one two three four five pleats and three sections and three sections well sections okay. as in like sections of the valance so we have uh, or three boards I should say let's okay. call it that way so we have a board on the left window mm -hmm. with the kick pleat on the left and the inverted pleat in the center mm -hmm. where the left board and the center board then we have the center board and just like before the boards are not attached. And uh, in this section, we have in the center board, we have the inverted pleat on the side, inverted pleat on the right side, and then we have inverted pleat in the center as well. Okay. And then we have the right board for the right window where we have that um, left pleat, mm -hmm. and then we have the right kick pleat. So three boards and five pleats all together. Well, what's funny is we, re we refer to, it's so funny how everyone does that, everything so differently. We, in our worlds of window works, we refer to um, not necessarily boards, but from pleat to pleat, that's a section. Gotcha. Yeah. I understand. So that's, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so here's a lesson, right? Yeah. We're going to take a, a chapter out of Luann's uh, teaching. You know, mm -hmm. what's the lesson here? <laughs> yeah. And the lesson is, you guys, if you specify window treatments, if you uh, have a workroom that you're trying to explain what you need, or a client that you're trying to explain what it is that you're doing, you have to make sure that you use the same language. And if the other person doesn't quite know which language or terminology to use, then you first need to educate them, just yes. like Kim just did. Between pleat and pleat, we're calling this a section. And in this balance, we're going to have um, one, two, three, four, four sections. sections yeah. yeah. So educate first, then explain, and better yet, even render a little bit. Or better yet, we have 60 episodes of PowerPoint presentations mm -hmm. for you guys, videos and pictures and slides and really great educational uh, mm -hmm. material. So feel free to use our pictures and our stuff when you sell or explain this to your clients. That's yeah. really what we're here for. Exactly. Alrighty, everyone. Well, that concludes our first AM episode of uh, <laughs> Window Treatment Friday Live. Before we let you go, there are a couple of free goodies and things that we want to go over really quickly. Um, we're going to start here with us at Window Works. Luann wrote an ebook, uh, 10 Things You Need to Know About Custom Window Treatment. So if you're new to the window treatment uh, market, this is a great ebook because it's Window Treatments 101. If you head on over to our website, windowworksnj.com, you can download your free copy. Awesome. And then from Vitalia Inc., you also have a free goodie. It is a curated lookbook filled with inspiration and education. It has lots of pictures that you can use in your sales presentations or just explaining something to your workroom. It also has excerpts from the presentations that I have done for various trade associations and groups where I explain some of the terminology that Kim and I alluded to today and in our previous episodes. And to hear the audio version of Window Treatment Friday, which kind of started this whole live movement that Vita and I have been doing now for 60 episodes, <laughs> head on over to Luann's uh, uh, website, luannigara.com, hit the podcast tab, and on the right-hand side in the search tool, hit WTF, and all of your audio uh, episodes will be there. 
Awesome. And Renee from the Fabric Shield, hello, hello. In case you're wondering if you're like in a La La Land like, with a twist happening? of time, you're not. <laughs> it is not 12 noon. It is indeed 9, 9.30. And Kim and I decided to try something new, mostly because of my personal um, time constraints today. But also, I think it's kind of working. I'm kind of liking it. So we'll I see am. if it sticks. I think our, you know. Our Maybe we found a new time. I think so. Our end of uh, our our chat at the end, mm -hmm. you know, when we, we when we log off. I think we, I think we have a new uh, a new time, guys. I think we have a winner. <laughs> yeah. So. Um, before we let you go, we just want to tell you how to get a hold of us and how to contact us. And if you are an interior designer in the Philadelphia area, we are the one stop go to your uh, white glove um, concierge service for window treatments and upholstery that uh, that services exclusively interior designers. So if you are um, having a project that you would like us to help you with, we have our, we support our designers 100% with an all encompassing exclusive service, hard treatment, soft treatments, upholstery, motorization, um, and uh, everything that has to do with window treatments. So DM, PM, email, call, we're here for you. And if you are in the New Jersey and New York area, um, if, whether you're an interior designer or you are a consumer, we would love to help you with your next bay window or whatever window treatment and awning project. Please give us a call at Window Works or you can send us an email or a DM on Instagram and Facebook. Hmm. All right, you guys, thank you so much for joining us. Join us here every every Friday. Watch for our posts on Instagram and Facebook, letting you know what time it will be. But most likely, it seems like 9 o'clock um, is working. And I appreciate you humoring us today. Again, the reason, the primary reason is because my son made Junior Olympics, and I'm so excited. So hence this uh, this T-shirt. Sorry for the casual look today. But you know, you have to represent our um, aquatic club. And uh, we are off to South Jersey to support my son in um, in four events that he's doing for the Junior Olympics and swimming. So I'm I, sorry, I had to put that in as a proud mama. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Renee. <laughs> well, good luck to Anson and we know he will, you'll have to report back to us next week. <laughs> I, I shall, I shall. And whatever he does, I told him, honey, I love you unconditionally. And I'm just so proud of you for even making it. It's, exactly. a, it's a pretty big deal for, you know, for his age. Exactly. Alrighty, everyone. Have a great weekend. We'll see Thank you next you. Friday. Thank you so much. See you next Friday, Kim, because if it's Friday, it's Window Treatment Friday Live. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Have a great weekend.